Hi guys, welcome to my Elixir Phoenix 1.3 chat tutorial. My name is Tensor. Today we'll be building a chat application inside of Phoenix 1.3. I thought that a chat application would be a good idea because one of the first projects that we did in Phoenix 1.2 was also a chat application. I figured that this would give you guys a decent contrast between Phoenix 1.3 and 1.2. So I have one announcement to make very briefly before we get started. I have one more Rust tutorial that I really want to do, but unfortunately the library that I want to use is broken. So hopefully that will get fixed in the next few days and I'll be able to go back to Rust and finish that one tutorial. With Phoenix 1.3, the Phoenix generators are prefixed now with PHX rather than Phoenix. And the reason for this is because there are a lot of new generators inside of Phoenix 1.3. They also wanted to make sure that when people were migrating from 1.2 to 1.3 they'd still have the ability to use the 1.2 generators and by the time that Phoenix 1.4 comes out they will remove the old generators and replace them with the new 1.3 ones. To create our application we want to type in mix phx.new and then the name of the application in this case it will be chat. This will generate our files and then it will ask us if we want to install our dependencies and we want to hit yes. After your app is generated, we get all the messages that we got before. One of the largest differences between 1.2 and 1.3 is the fact that the web folder has now been put inside of our lib folder. And now our web app is actually a second app inside of our Elixir project. Phoenix now acts like what is called an umbrella project. We have our offline Elixir information inside of chat, and then we have our online stuff inside of chat underscore web. Now, like before, we do want to set up our database. In my case, I'm going to be using Postgres. You go into your config and dev.exs, and then you'd edit this area of your file. We want to create our database so we can just run mix ecto create and this will compile our application and then create our database and you see here that the database was created for chat.repo seeing that this is a chat application one of the first things that we want to do is generate a channel a channel in phoenix is a persisted connection between the browser and the server this is essentially a wrapper around a web socket one of the nicer features that comes with phoenix 1.3 is all of the generator and this is no different for our channel so we want to generate the boilerplate to create a channel so we just type in mix phx.gen.channel and then the name of the channel in this case we want it to be called chat room this will create the file in lib chat web channels chat room and it will also create a test file and then it will tell us how to set up our channel by copying and pasting this line into our users socket file and that's exactly what i'm going to do so we've put channel chat room lobby and then the chat web chat room channel inside of our users channel.ex file and here's the file that was generated by that command you can see that we have this join function the join function takes in three arguments we have the name of the channel which is chat room lobby basically that makes it so that this will only run when the client calls that specific channel then our next argument payload is a request from the user it contains all kinds of things like authentication credentials messages a username and stuff like that and then the final argument is the socket which which is the actual WebSocket itself. Now you'll see inside of this, we've got this authorized question mark function that runs on the payload. If you look at the actual authorized function, it will always return true. This will always return okay socket and it will never return error reason. I suspect that the reason why they add this authorized function in the boilerplate is because a lot of people who create chat applications inside of Phoenix will want to create a authentication function. We have two handle in functions. The one that's the most important to us is this second one. So you see here that we have this string called shout and then we have our payload and our socket. This handle in function is what handles broadcasting our messages to our clients. So we call this broadcast function, which broadcasts on the socket, this message shout, and then the payload. And of course we can use our JavaScript to pick what we want that payload to output. We want to go to templates layout app.html.eex and we want to add jQuery to this file. We want to go down to the script tag here and we want to put our jQuery over top of it. I'm just using a CDN to bring in jQuery, but you could actually download the file and put it in the same way that our JS app.js is put in. Then we want to go to assets JS app.js and uncomment this line that says import socket from period backslash socket. This will import this socket.js file into our app.js. Inside of this app.js file we want to get our channel by pointing our 
socket.channel at chatroom Robbie, which is the name of our room. And then we put in a empty object. Then we'll say list equals, and we'll use jQuery to get the element message list. And then our message will be the element MSG and our name will be the element name. On our message, we wanna handle any key press events. So we create this message.on, we put in the key press, and then we create an anonymous function that takes in key press and event. And if event.keycode is equal to 13, if the user hits enter, then we want to push to our channel shout with name, name.value, and message message dot value so the so the text that's inside of our name element and then the text that's inside of our message element and then we want to replace the text inside of our message element with an empty string then for our channel we want to add a function that will fire every single time it has the shout command so on shout we pass in the payload and then we append to a list our payload dot name or a string of new user when a user logs in they'll by default be called new user otherwise they'll be called the name that they enter into the name box and then we'll pass the payload.message inside of this as well and that will show our message on the screen finally we want to handle joining our channel channel.join if we receive okay then we want to send a response back that says console log joined successfully with the response inside of it and if we receive an error then we want to send a response that says console log unable to join so now we want to go to our templates page index.html eex and remove all of the html inside of here and we want to replace it with html like this so we have a div called id message list and then we have our div class row form group and inside of it we have this input with an id of name and this will be where the user puts their name and then we have another div and inside of that we have an input with message where the user types in the message that they want to input we can add some simple css to make our message list larger by going to assets css app CSS. In here I just picked our message list and we added a black border and we gave it a height of 600 pixels. We added some padding and we said the overflow will be a scroll and then our margin bottom will be 30 pixels. Now we can run our application by calling mix phx.server and this will compile our application and then serve it on localhost 4000. And now we've got our box for our name and then our message. We can put in stuff here and it will output like a chat room. And if I open up another window, you'll see here that the chat that we were getting before disappears, but I can also type in information here and it will appear in our other window. Metal Man says hi there. In our last chat application, we added the presence module to see all the usernames that were logged in. In this one, we're going to add a small persistence layer. And the reason for this is to look at how Phoenix 1.3 handles models now let's terminate our server and then we want to add a schema to our application so we'll use our generator schemas represent the structures in our database right now we have no database tables but we want to create one to hold our messages and then the user that put in the message so we type in phx.gen.schema then we put in the singular name of our database table which will be message and then the plural name of our database table which will be messages then we want to put in the fields name is a string and message is also a string when we hit enter you'll see that it creates a file at libchatmessage.ex and then it also also creates a migration inside of our lib chat application we now have this message.ex file and inside of it we have our schema messages which has the field for message which is a string and the field for name which is also a string we also have this change set function which allows us to do various things to our message map so now we want to alter our database by migrating the data into it we call mix ecto.migrate now if we jump back into our chat application we can add some persistence we can call our chat chat.message.changeset function and inside of it we want to put our chat.message map and the payload which will fill that map and this change set function will validate all the fields before it puts them inside of our message and then we want to pipe the output from that function into chat.repo.insert and this will insert those items into our database this is a fine way to do things but it isn't very asynchronous if we have like hundreds of users inside of our application and they are constantly saving information into the database it's going to cause some problems so to fix this we will make a new private function called save msg and inside of it we'll pass in msg and we'll copy and paste our chat.message.chainset chat.repo.insert and instead of payload we'll pass msg into here. then inside of our handle in function we'll use the spawn keyword to spawn a 
process, we'll pass in an anonymous function that calls save msg, and we'll call that on payload. And now our function is fully asynchronous. So this is now independent of our request cycle. Since we don't really need to see when a user saves a message into the database, we don't really need to see any output. This kind of pattern will allow us to have many different users sending messages at the same time without having a large amount of slowdown. The messages get put into the database, but we have no way to pull them out of the database thus far. To do this, we want to alter our join function. So we do this by using the send function. This allows us to specify the process that we want to send the message to. In our case, it's this process that we're working on. So we're sending in self, and we want this to be called after a person joins. And that's why we're putting in this atom called after join. Our channel module works sort of like a large gen server module. Accordingly, we need to write a handle info function that will correspond with this after join atom and fire back as a callback. And I'll write it down here. You'll see that we have our handle info. This has after join and it passes in the socket as well. And because we do not want it to be blocking, we can just have it return back no reply and socket. Let's go into our chat.message module and we'll create a function that allows us to easily get our messages out of our repository. Our function will be called get msg, and we'll have a limit which will be a default of 20, but we'll automatically get the last 20 messages out of our box every single time a user joins. And to do this, it's fairly simple. We just called chat.repo.all. We pass in the type of schema that we want, in this case, message. And let's make this function plural. Now we can go back into our chat room channel module and call this function inside of our handle info function. So this will get all of the messages out of our database, but it won't broadcast them. The way that we can broadcast them, though, is by passing them into enum each which will enumerate over all of the messages. And this function will take each of our messages and then push them to the socket as a shout command. And it will pass them back as a hash map with name being message.name and message being message.message. .message. We can rerun our server and open it up. And I'm just gonna throw in a bunch of different random messages. And if I reload the page for Metal Man, you'll see that all the tensor messages persist. And if I do the same for tensor, all the tensor messages persist as well. And I'll put in a bunch of random messages for Metal Man, and then I'll open up another window. And you'll see here that now we have the entire conversation between tensor and Metal Man inside of this new window. Okay, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment box below. And if you disliked it, then downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night, guys.